music is a language, right? So it's easy to communicate with other people. You don't have to speak their language as long as you play music with them. To make the subway a stage, you play the same intensity, 110%, like you did in the concert halls. And you give that to the people passing by to their work on their way home. That's what music brings, a little joy. I started as a violinist from China, and then my parents immigrated to Canada, and nobody was there to teach me the violin. And so I picked up the cello and fell in love with the instrument. Actually, my brother, when I was younger, he played a lot of piano and he made his own compositions. And when I started grade seven, they actually gave me the saxophone. And it didn't really matter what instrument they gave me, I just wanted an instrument to connect with them on and uh, create music with them. I uh, inspired, like, you know, our younger people to pick up instruments and play, play them. The mainstream music right now, I, I, still, I still like playing them, but you know, there's other stuff out there too that people don't know. And so I tried my best to pass it on to my students. Uh, I met Kevin uh, at York. We went to York together for music. And then I met Leo in the subway. So I just started talking to him, okay, let's jam. And then we clicked and then just go from there. Martin, Kevin, we started to play together. It's like a family. And then we realized that something is cooking. They're teaching me stuff. Like I'm learning a lot from these guys. And they're learning something from me. The fact that we can do that diversity. That's what music needs. It's a stage the entire time. So I get audience feedback for every song I play, every note I play. And it really helps me craft like my performance. Technique is very important. But to do that, you gotta invest a lot of time. And sometimes it's quite lonely. You're gonna make a lot of sacrifices. For me, it's worth it, you know, to become one with that instrument. That instrument becomes you. You speak through it. And it began to have a spirit, a soul. These days, if you see musicians playing in a club, in a pub, in a bar, after they don't get paid. And a lot of time they have to pay to play in the club. I like playing, but that doesn't mean like I get to play for free. The biggest one was uh, in university second year, my mother had passed away, um, and she was really pushing me to do music. My other siblings less so, but you know, there was a period when I thought, eh, maybe I should drop out and do something else, but I kind of just stuck with it. And here we are. <laughs> this is the guy that I saw like since I was a kid. I, I know a drummer here. I was still in at college, right? The drummer called me and said, hey, you want to record? Okay, why not? And then he said, and okay, I, we're playing with Alex Acuna and Abraham Laborio up there. Amazing. They play with Michael Jackson, Ray Charles. But they're the most humble guys ever. Yeah. What I learned from playing with a group rather than playing solo is you have to listen. I think my role is one piece of the puzzle, it's very important to know all the other pieces. Just knowing your part is not good enough. You have to know what everybody else is doing. Putting smiles on people's faces. I mean, especially when you're playing in the subway all day and you see people looking completely miserable. And the one time they crack a smile is when they're listening to a song that they recognize. It makes it worthwhile. <laughs>